What we're going to be going over here is a five-part cost accounting system, and we're going to do it in terms of a normal, historical, full absorption job order cost accounting system. So when you're dealing with uh, cost accounting and you have these different systems, at least this gives you an outlook here or an overview of what you should be included here, or what you should include when you're looking at these different cost accounting problems and systems here. So we'll look at these different five parts. We'll do it in terms of that, uh, what we're going to be looking at, this job order here. But let's just understand what's going on here first. So uh, the first part of the cost accounting, you're going to have an input measure measurement basis and you're going to have some selections here and then you're going to have an inventory valuation method how you value your in inventory and then cost accumulation method how you accumulate your costs here on these on this uh, cost accounting uh, for a cost accounting system and then you're going to have your cost flow assumption how your cost flows here and then finally you have your recording interval capability here Okay, so let's just go through the problem that we have here. So for our example, using, uh, we're going to use, for our input measurement here, we're going to use normal historical counting here. So let's just go down and look at what that is. So for normal historical costing, you use historical costs for the direct material, direct labor, but the overhead here is charged or applied to the inventory using a predetermined overhead rate per an activity measure here. When we're talking about historical, all we're really talking about is the cost that we're accumulating for the year here. So in the case here of our direct material and direct labor, we'd be using actual cost, but for applying our overhead, we would be charging that off at some predetermined overhead rate uh, for whatever activity we're looking at. Okay, so that takes care of our input uh, measurement basis. So now going to our inventory valuation method. And in this case, we're going to be using full absorption uh, eva uh, valuation here for our inventory. So let's go down and let's look at that. Again, the full absorption method, this is where all the manufacturing costs are capitalized in the inventory. And they would be charged to the inventory and it becomes an asset. So your inventory account here becomes an asset. This means that these costs do not become expenses until the inventory is sold. All right. All right. So let's go up here and look at our cost accumulation method here. Again, we were talking about our job order here. So uh, incidentally, I got everything marked in blue here for the system we're looking at. So for our job order. Okay, this is uh, for job order costing. This is where the costs are accumulated by jobs, orders, contracts, or lots. And the key is that the work is done to some customer specification. As, res as a result, each job tends to be different. Okay, so that takes care of our job order for our cost accumulation method. Now let's look at our cost flow assumption here. And in this case, it's a specific ID here by the job. Okay, so let's look and understand that. So this is where our costs flow through the inventory accounts by the job in a job order cost system. And it really represents in here an example of specific identification. So with this job order, you use specific identification. And it requires the various jobs. It, de it determines the timing of the cost flows. Simple jobs tend to move through the system faster than more complex jobs. Okay, so that's for our cost flow. Now going and looking at recording our interval capability. So in this case, we're going to be using perpetual inventory. Okay, so for perpetual inventory method, it provides a company with the capability of maintaining continuous records of the quantities of inventory and the cost flow through the inventory accounts. Okay, all right. So we went through just an example here using this normal historical full absorption job order cost accounting system. But the point is here, you can actually design different cost accounting systems, or at least you know what to look for when you're setting up your cost accounting systems or evaluating the problems that you'd be looking at here. So if you got textbook problems that you're looking at, you really have these five different uh, parts here for each of those cost accounting systems that you have to be concerned with. You can actually design cost accounting systems uh, through the selections here. Not all of them are uh, compatible, but and nonetheless, you can take certain elements out of each of these and you can match them up. But 
Uh, again, not everything is compatible, but the idea is here is that you have to know these different uh, parts to each of cost accounting. So you'd, uh, for our example here, or any example, you'd have to look at the input measurement basis, and we can go briefly go through those. Again, you'd have to know how to value your inventory, what method you'd use, and then how you accumulate your costs here. And then again, cost flow assumptions, how does the cost flow? and then recording your interval capability. So if we gone back here to our input measurement basis, well, you have actual historical costs. Those are the actual costs that you'd have for the year. And then you have normal historical costing and then standard costing. Those are for your input measurements. And then for the inventory valuation method, well, you have a throughput basis, direct or variable valuation here, full absorption that we looked at, and then activity-based valuation. Cost accumulating methods, either by job order, process costing, back flush costing, hybrid costing. And then we go to our cost flow here. Again, we have that specific job, FIFO inventory assumption here, or weighted average inventory. And then finally, we have recording our inter interval capability here, either perpetual inventory or periodic inventory. So you get the idea what's going on here with the five-part cost accounting system. So when you're doing your cost accounting problems, you can just go and re remember here, if you're coming back to any of those systems that you're identifying, you come back to it, use a flow chart like this, and then look for each of the different inputs that you have here for the five different parts. Okay, so that'll pretty much uh, dis end our discussion here on it, but you can see that this can be a useful tool here when you're doing uh, cost accounting problems or textbook type problems and you're a little unsure of uh, what's going on and what has to be done for a particular problem, but uh, in a way, and this is, the textbooks are filled up on this here, this is what it is, but this is basically what you're talking about when you're talking about cost accounting. This is all the different, looking at the various methods that we have here, the different uh, uh, valuation methods and accumulation methods and cost flows and going back to our measurements here and so forth. All right, so I guess that'll pretty much summarize our discussion.